Dana with the Geocache family. Welcome back to our channel. Uh, if you are new here, we are a first year family farm um, learning how to grow in a greenhouse with the hopes of uh, being able to open and start a nursery um, and a flower farm next year. Uh, we, of course, have had many obstacles along the way. Uh, and with this being our first year, we, um, we came in just to test how things would do. And this is how things did. <laughs> we are uh, in the throes of trying to uh, clean up this greenhouse a little bit so that I can do fall plantings. Um, and move things around. We have the second greenhouse um, up and going. And so we are um, trying to transition uh, for next year what we're gonna do and uh, do differently. So I thought I would uh, take you guys on a quick walk through so that you could see everything that we did this year and then um, when I clean up, I can show you um, a little bit more uh, what it looks like. I've got a lot of tomatoes to harvest. Uh, we are a month post catching COVID for uh, me and Naya the third time. Um, the rest of the family caught it for the first time. And um, this time, kicked my butt so uh, I am still struggling I am still weak and of course things have gotten away from me because I have just been so miserable and I've had no energy but um, I think the most frustrating thing is that in spite of opening the catwalk right there we have gotten no pollinators uh, in here and so all of these uh, sunflowers are sterile and I'm having to um, hand pollinate my squash plants to get any fruit. The butternut squash was doing great but um, I have been sick like literally a whole month and um, and so my spaghetti squash I only have two so far. Um, I need to come in here and see uh, if I can get some of these guys hand pollinated because I really want spaghetti squash. If nothing else, I will have seeds um, saved for these guys for next year, because, I mean, oh my goodness, this guy is mammoth. Look at him. Um, I have one buttercup burgess going, and, um, oh, I just, I gotta get out of here and try and train this guy up. I think these guys will go a little bit longer and um, I can still get stuff off of them. But uh, the butternut is pretty much done. I think I have a couple little acorn squash in here. Yeah, there's one back there, and there's one right there. They are so small though, I'm so disappointed. Oh. But yeah, I got a lot to do. I, I got a lot to do. Dang it, all my calendula seeds and flower heads on the ground. I meant to get these ones in the dehydrator and I got so sick, they have just been sitting over here. So we may get some volunteers come next year, but that's okay. Um, everything is gonna be changing in here come next year. So yeah, this is, this is my jungle. But things are definitely starting to fall over because they're not staked and we learned a lot. We learned a lot about the spacing and, um, you know, what I want to do different next year. Can you see the size of that sunflower head? Look at it. Like, seriously, the biggest sunflower I've ever grown. And I'm sad because it is most likely sterile. But, okay, it is what it is, you know? pretty much going to try and get um, these sunflowers out of here. Um, I think some of these dahlias are 
nearing their end of cycle here. Um, these guys I should be able to um, dig up though and keep the tubers. So uh, we'll see. I um, I don't want to do a lot of tear out today because I need to focus on starting seeds, and so um, that is my my main goal for this day that I have a little bit of energy um, and I'm not coughing my full head off. Um, I need to get out here and harvest these spoon currants. These guys are huge. They don't usually get that big, but um, because I haven't been out here picking them. Oh my goodness. I mean, you can't even walk. It's getting impossible to um, hand water in here now. My poor God Pop, he's my waterer and he is struggling. So I'm going to try and make it a little bit easier for him. And there's my butternut. She just, she's looking rough. There's one misshapen squash there. And then I have one right there. Um, just two plants though. It's, um, amazing. There's still a lot of new growth, though, so I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. It just, it looks so bad. I want to tear it out, but at the same token, I keep saying, I want to see how long I can push the, uh, the boundaries of production in here. Uh, I don't know. I think the biggest thing is if I can at least get the sunflowers out, and then I can send the children in here to um, collect tomatoes while me and the oldest work on uh, seed starting. Look at them. I don't know if they're going to get ripe in time. This one finally started some too. The third one ever get any? There are um, three different varieties of figs. Yeah, see I don't see anything on this one. Oh, maybe that might be some starting in there. The cotton, oh my gosh, I love this cotton. Look at it. The, um, the flowers start pink and then they change to white. Um, and then they get these incredible pouches that holds the cotton in them. And so I am just waiting to see what these are going to look like. I mean, I know it's going to look like a cotton ball, but like I can't wait. So the one that is the oldest pod, I think, I think is that one right there. But, oh, they're starting to really get all over the place now. <laughs> it's just so cool. There's a pretty pink one. See how they start pink? And then they change white. This is all the same plant right here. But, uh, yeah, I freaking love growing cotton. I, oh my gosh, I love the leaf structure. I love the flowers. Oh, it's kind of like the Lysianthus in that it's a uh, true passion, I guess, because um, they take so long to reach maturity but all right so this is the fennel we planted over here and I have um, these are straw flowers that I planted really late so I'm curious to see if they're gonna make it to uh, maturity here before it starts getting cold we had our first um, cold snap and um, temperatures got to the 30s the last two days but um, there's basically a 20 degree difference from outside to inside and so I was not worried about anything out here everything still looks great but yeah yeah we, uh, we definitely got some major harvesting to do I'm just so sad that I cannot really save seeds this year. I was telling the, I was telling my oldest this morning that 
these guys we had to cut way back because the grasshoppers decimated them and they're coming back so beautiful now i mean oh my goodness i cannot wait to get these tubers up i might even be able to come and cut some flowers look at her oh she's so pretty so pretty oh gosh it's just so daunting the amount of work that needs to happen in here oh I may have to just call uncle and um, just start pulling some of these plants yeah I definitely am going to do a much different setup oh look at these beauties oh hi babies Oh, look at this one. Look at this one. Oh. oh, I don't even remember what this one was called, but holy guacamole. That is a beautiful zinnia. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at this pretty little peach one. What are you? Oh, so cool. I didn't think I was going to get any zinnias because um, I got them in so dang late. Oh, look at my little sweet Williams back there. So pretty. Oh, there's my Irish eyes. <clears throat> Love it. So one of the things we learned this year was that status can be harvested snips at a time. You can clear cut it all the way down to the ground and then it still recovers. So that patch back there, we cut all the way down to just the base leaves and it's come back beautiful. So uh, I need to get, get those guys harvesting. I gotta get some bun buns back in here, but it's still so warm. But yeah, so these guys are starting to look rough. I think they're getting too much humidity back here. So I'm definitely learning I wanna plant my tomatoes away from the swamp coolers. Um, even though the swamp coolers are not at full uh, production or capacity I don't know what you call it uh, they're not running optimum they um, they still put enough out that it's keeping things really wet the snapdragons we are finding we can definitely grow uh, year-round uh, they kind of petered out for about a month and now they're starting to head again so um, I'm gonna keep these guys planted closely to the swamp cooler and the glads are pretty much done. These are my last few here. I think um, had these guys stayed on a hole closer to the swamp cooler, um, they would have lasted a bit longer and not bloomed so fast. And so when we dig these guys up, which we're probably going to do soon, um, we're going to let them rest and I'm going to actually move them to the second greenhouse. And then next year, they're going to be planted a lot closer than they were this year. So, I think, I think I need to go change the controls on the master box up front because I can hear the water's trying to come on, but it's not. So, yeah, Alyssum definitely... Uh, baby's breath they are going to go into a patch by themselves because it has made harvesting and walking the aisles incredibly difficult here because um, it just overgrew into it so bad but um, man it sure is pretty these I think I can dry so I'm going to go ahead once it dries off back here a little bit and um, hang them up right. yeah I want to start transitioning 
Um, we're not moving bunnies out here yet, but we are using a vacuum to suck up their bunny gold and um, get it put back into the ground. Now see this area back here, filled. Filled with little tiny, tiny, tiny pollinators. It is, it's crazy. I don't know if it's the alyssum that's drawing them or what, but like, oh my gosh. This is the time when it's awesome to come into a garden because like stuff is established and you don't really have to do as much work, but um, tomatoes, I have to keep on top of tomatoes better than I did this year. Although I say that every year, <laughs> but um, yeah, trying to think about how to do it different next time so that, um, you know, they don't get crazy like this, but yeah, this greenhouse is phenomenal. I am I'm pleased with how it's done for having not been planted for, I don't even know how many years, uh, nothing has been in ground here. They, um, it was covered in plastic and they uh, didn't do in-ground growing at all. So I love that my peppers are finally starting to do great here. I have quite a few of them in there. Oh, those zinnias. Oh. Yeah, so I need to get some of this stuff that's just falling over. It's beautiful, but it's it's definitely making things hard in here. So that is what I'm going to tackle this morning. Take it out to my chickens and maybe my pig boy. We did give him um, some of the uh, sunflower heads yesterday with the sterile seeds. And he liked the first couple bites, but then he was like, wait a minute. What is this crap? So he didn't eat anymore. And the bunnies kind of picked at it, but they didn't go deep either. Anyway, anyway, that's, that's where we're at. We uh, gotta change things up. Thanks so much for being a part of our journey, guys. Um, thank you for cheering us on and sending your prayers. Um, husband still has not found a job yet, and uh, we definitely, we are not uh, self-sustaining yet and so um, prayers are coveted so thank you for being with us grow as you go and I'll see you next time bye